Today, we continue the story of the rebooter from the last Coach Church video, when I answered a specific question he had about how he could best prepare to be a good lover once he had completed his recovery from porn-induced erectile dysfunction. And now that he has done that, I asked him to share with me the full story of how he developed that sexual dysfunction and how he recovered. And he graciously did so. So today, we're going to go over his full story of sexual dysfunction, pornography-induced, and his recovery from it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is Noah Church, your host. I've gotten a lot of questions about whether or not Coach Church is a religious channel. Um, no, it's not. It is secular as am I. My name is just really Noah Church. <laughs> I hope you're prepared for a story time with Noah today because that's what this is. I've got five pages of story here and we're going to read through it. So chunk out a block of time, sit back, relax, and absorb some wisdom from the experiences of another rebooter. Also, in case you don't know, if you don't want to watch these videos or watch these stories, they're also in written article form on my website, and you can find that link in the description right down below. Anon says, I'm 22 years old, turning 23 next week, and I can confidently say that I've successfully and completely cured my porn-induced erectile dysfunction. It's been a painful journey at times, but it's the most amazing feeling to finally be free from this problem. I started watching porn on my parents' computer when they were out of the house at around the age of seven or eight, and my usage escalated out of control when I got my first mobile device. So we know that the average age of first exposure to pornography is 11, and that means that yes, some people are exposed later in adolescence or in late teenagehood, but that also means that many people are exposed before the age of 11, like myself and this rebooter. That's why it's so important for parents and educators to be aware of the dangers that pornography use has and the potential that it has to create problems in one's life like addiction and sexual dysfunction. And anybody at any stage of life can start using pornography and get caught in a trap and develop these symptoms, but the risk does go up the earlier one is first exposed to pornography. And that's what I see a lot in my clients is people who first encountered porn when they were 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13, 14, you know, all before really adolescence has completed, before they've ever really had a real relationship or real intimacy, real sex. And that's the template on which their sexuality has been built. And that's dangerous and it can create a lot of problems in adulthood. So this is a very common story. You're certainly not alone, my friend. Having unlimited access whenever I wanted caused me to consume porn in extremely long binge sessions that lasted several hours, and I did this almost daily. I would stay up all night scouring the internet and checking out every kind of porn that was out there. I was voraciously curious and hopelessly addicted to the rush I was feeling. That sounds familiar. I fell into much the same pattern when I was using, as a kid especially, and you know, I would get lost in it, and it would be endlessly fascinating, but always unsatisfying, you know? You never get to the point where you're like, ah, like, I'm done, and that felt great. I feel so good. I feel so satisfied. It's always like, uh, that's not really what I wanted, you know? It scratched the itch, but at the same time, it made the, made the itch even stronger. And uh, yeah, there's no satisfaction down at the end of that road. Now, that doesn't mean that people who don't use as frequently or as much or to an extreme level like you or I may have done, uh, extreme of course being relative, that they can't develop all the same problems. You know, People can develop addiction to pornography or pornography-induced sexual dysfunctions while only using a couple times a week for 10, 20 minutes. It's really not about the time that is spent using, but how we use it and the problems that we see develop out of that use. At the time, I was not very social and I was pretty introverted for the most part. I didn't play sports, I wasn't in any clubs or after school activities, I didn't have many hobbies and I didn't do much. I preferred to be by myself at home and listen to music, play my drum set, play video games or watch TV and movies. I found porn to be more stimulating than any of these things, so it became my main hobby, so to speak. 
Yeah, pornography is very effective at tapping right into one of our most powerful natural drives, that drive to reproduce. And we have neurons in our reward system that only respond to sexual stimuli or can be artificially stimulated by certain very addictive drugs. But for the most part in the natural world, it's only excited by those sexual stimuli. That's how important that our sex drive is to us evolutionarily to pass along our genes to continue the survival of the species. And pornography artificially taps into that very powerful drive and can become more stimulating and more interesting, more fascinating than anything else in our lives. Even though on a conscious level, we know it's just pictures and pixels on a screen to that base part of us, that animal instinctive part of ourselves, it becomes more important than anything else and thus more interesting than anything else. We can lose interest in our hobbies, our passions, our ambitions. And we often don't realize that that's what, hap what has happened until we find a reason to quit porn or are just you know away on in the army or whatever for some reason and are away from pornography and find our interest and our passions returning to us and the color comes back into our lives. And that's an effect of long-term pornography use that many people don't give enough credit, don't recognize. It's the sexual dysfunction that people usually recognize and that's what usually gets people to quit in the first place. But once we do, we can realize to the full extent what pornography has done to us and what it maybe has taken from us. Damn, that's pretty awful. I sure am glad I don't live like that anymore. Anyway, despite being introverted, somewhat socially awkward and shy, and watching crazy amounts of porn, I had my first girlfriend and first kiss at around age 13. We didn't do anything sexual beyond that. She ended up breaking my heart, which seems silly now looking back, but at the time it really affected me. You know, adulthood is built on a foundation of broken hearts. And I think what is essential to a broken heart is subverted expectations. You know, we expected things to work out or reality to be a certain way because that's what we've been fantasizing about. And we have an attachment to that fantasy, to that expectation. Then reality steps in and backhands us across the face. And we realize, oh, like I'm completely self-delusional. And all those fantasies I had about you know, how she felt about me or where we were headed or what my life was going to be like, they were just fantasies. And that causes us to have broken hearts. And many of us will have many, many broken hearts. And so there's no immunity to having a broken heart and except, you know, completely hardening yourself off to all hope, which is not what I recommend. But as adults, we can come to see the world and see each other more for who we really are and what the world really is. And having that realistic perspective and interaction with the world can help us operate without attachments. You know, we can act because we believe in the action, but without being attached to an outcome. We can get to know someone and explore intimacy with them without fantasizing about a life with them, without fantasizing about what our marriage is going to be like and what our children are going to look like because we don't know what the future is going to bring. And we shouldn't get attached to a fantasy life before it becomes reality. We can have hopes, but to operate with those sorts of attachments is just asking for disappointment and a broken heart. And we learn that along this journey. And pornography... It has a way of emotionally stunting us because using a pornography consistently over time, it's a means of escape. It's using fantasy. It's living in a fantasy world. And the more we do that, the less able we are to learn about the real world and to grow and to become emotionally mature adults. So once we quit porn, a lot of us have a lot of catching up to do in the emotional maturity realm. But it's an exciting journey, if a painful one. And at the end of it is a more stable, secure confident and content life. I continued watching huge amounts of porn as a coping device and as an escape. A couple years later, at the age of 15 or so, I started dating another girl and she became my girlfriend. She gave me my first hand job, and I'll never forget it because I barely got hard and had a really difficult time reaching orgasm. I actually finished myself off because it just wasn't going to happen. Excuse me. With her touch. 
This is a painful memory for me, but it's also pretty funny because my parents called me right in the middle of it. Here I was talking to my mom with my pants down and a girl's hand on my dick. I'm glad there's a bit of humor in this memory to balance out the shame. She gave me a few more hand jobs, and I always had the same problems. This girl broke my heart as well, and just like the last breakup, I turned to porn to feel better. Now, without exception, I see this pattern of behavior in my addicted clients. Now, not all of my clients are addicted. You know, addiction being an emotional reliance upon a substance or an activity or behavior. Uh, something that has caused negative consequences in our lives and that even once we've recognized those negative consequences and the need to quit and promised ourselves that we would do so or would reduce our use, we find our actions out of our control. We find it extremely difficult to keep those promises to ourselves. Now, not all my clients are like this. Some, once they see that they have a pornography problem and it's the source of a lot of their symptoms that they're struggling with and they want to rid themselves of, they're able to become porn-free and stay porn-free. But many of my clients are addicted and struggle with relapse. And among those, without exception, every single one I've worked with has come to use pornography as a means of emotional escape, a way to make themselves feel better or make themselves forget about their problems when they're feeling depressed, rejected, sad, lonely, any one of all these negative emotions. And that's a big red flag. You know, if you're masturbating, Whether it's with porn or without porn, just because you're horny and it feels good, that's one thing. But when when it starts to become an escape and you start to rely on that as an emotional salve and a crutch, that's a big red flag waving in your face. Not long after this breakup, I began a relationship with a girl which lasted close to three years. She gave me my first blowjob. And like the memory of my first hand job, it's not a very good one. I can still remember that it was not long after one of my big porn binges, so I barely got hard at all. Here I was, getting my dick sucked for the first time, and I was not enjoying it. I felt horribly ashamed and embarrassed for not getting hard, and she was really upset. She thought she was bad at it, and it made her feel self-conscious. I felt horrible for making her feel this way. I was able to get hard for hand jobs and blow jobs after that, but I still was never fully enjoying the experiences because I would almost always have trouble maintaining my erection and reaching orgasm. Now, it's extremely common for partners of people with a porn-induced sexual dysfunction to take it personally. If you're not getting aroused for them, then they're going to think it's because of them, because they're not attractive enough, because they're not doing the right things, unless you open up that conversation and make them realize that, no, this is a dysfunction that has nothing to do with them. You do find them very attractive. You are very into them but you're struggling with this health uh, recovery and it's going to take some time. But as long as you can have that good communication, uh, you can prevent all those hurt feelings and you can actually foster some comfortable intimacy. No matter how your dick responds, you can still have a good time. You can still bond with each other. Oh, this is also how People with primary porn-induced sexual dysfunctions develop performance anxiety as well because if every single sexual experience in your life that you've had with another person has been characterized by shame and disappointment and pain and embarrassment, then obviously you're going to start dreading future sexual experiences because they've always been painful in the past. And that dread and anxiety is going to get in the way of just relaxing and enjoying yourself even after you've rebooted and should be physically capable of sex. The first time we tried to have sex is a horrible memory for me. I feel sick to my stomach just thinking about it. We decided that for our first time we would pitch a tent in the woods so we could be completely alone. We packed a picnic, a bottle of wine, some romantic lights. We made it into this big event and a lot of preparation went into it. There was a huge amount of buildup and I felt an enormous pressure. When the time came, I couldn't get hard at all. Both of us were very upset and devastated. She cried a lot, saying things like, Well, I guess you don't want me. I thought you said you loved me. She was incredibly hurt, but also seemed angry and resentful towards me, which was hard to take. I felt like such a failure, so I was a complete mess as well, crying and shaking, and I felt like I was going to puke. It was a pretty bad scene. I tried explaining to her that I did love her, that I really wanted to have sex with her, and that I didn't understand why my penis wasn't working. At the time, I truly did not know why I was having this problem. 
This was one of the worst feelings I had ever felt in my life. The next day, I did a lot of Googling to see if other young guys had experienced this. She did the same thing, because when we met up again, she apologized and said she now realized that it's a common problem for guys to get nervous and not get an erection, especially if it's their first time. This was a big relief, so we relaxed about it a bit and just kept trying. It took quite a few tries for us to have sex that actually worked. I would always lose my erection at some point. It did not It did end up working, and our sex life was pretty good for both of us, some of the time. But I still watched a lot of porn, and I now realize how seriously this affected our relationship. I would almost never initiate sex because I was getting my release from porn. When we did have sex, I wasn't that into it because it wasn't that stimulating to me compared to the extreme porn I was used to watching. This made her feel unattractive, unloved, and neglected. Because of this, she broke up with me and asked me to leave the apartment we were sharing. This absolutely crushed me, and I felt extremely guilty for making her feel unloved. So by practicing intimacy and building comfort and just relaxing and dissolving that anxiety, this Anon was able to get to the point where he could have functional sex most of the time, but still his porn use took away his ability to desire his partner as much as he should have been, to enjoy sex as much as he should have been, and to have the sort of relationship that they both deserved. And ultimately, his pornography use did lead to the end of their relationship. At the time, I naively thought that this girl was my soulmate, that I was going to marry her someday. The worst part about it is that I actually became aware of the effects of porn while I was in this relationship. I turned to the internet to try and figure out what could be causing my erectile difficulties, and I came across Gary Wilson's video and the NoFap community. My biggest regret is knowing full well what I was doing to myself and to my relationship, but not stopping because I enjoyed porn too much. Ultimately, I chose porn over this amazing girl that I loved. I'm very ashamed to admit to this, and it's one of my biggest regrets. Being so crushed by this breakup, you guessed it, I turned to porn to cope again. I went through around a year-long period of almost completely avoiding contact with girls. It was easier for me to stay away. I was bitter and resentful towards girls and deeply hurt and guilt-ridden by my experiences with them. So I kept to myself, focused on my studies, and continued watching lots of porn. I became very cold, and I made less and less time for being with friends and family. I became less social than ever. Unexpectedly, I found out that a girl that was one of my housemates and was in the same program in university as me had feelings for me. I had always had a crush on this girl since I met her, but at this point I was purposefully avoiding girls because I didn't want to go through the pain and embarrassment that I had felt previously. I had convinced myself that porn was more enjoyable than real sex anyway. Why go through all the trouble and heartache of having sex when I can just have porn to fulfill my sexual urges quickly and conveniently? I preferred it this way, or so I was telling myself. That's a dark and unsatisfying road that you chose for yourself, Anon. And fortunately, as long as we're alive, we have the chance to step off that path and choose a different one. Anyhow, a relationship developed with this new girl, and when the time came to have sex, I, of course, couldn't get hard, and it was very upsetting. Same thing all over again. Every attempt at having sex ended in me being completely devastated and crushed. I just shut down and didn't say much. It must have been awful for her. At my lowest point, I can remember being really excited when she told me she was on her period. This meant that we wouldn't have to try having sex, and it felt like a huge weight lifted off me. This cycle continued, and we never had much of a sex life at all. The time came for us to break up. We did it amicably, and the reason was we would be living a huge distance away from each other, and we both agreed that we did not want a long-distance relationship. We also weren't going to be living in the same place anytime soon, maybe even never. This changed when I got offered a job in the same city that she would be living in. I asked her if she'd be willing to give our relationship another try in a few months, when I would be moving. And she basically told me that she would love to spend time with me, watch movies, and cuddle, but she had no interest in having sex with me. This was the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak, and I became very depressed for a period of time. I decided enough is enough, and vowed to quit porn and do everything I could to have a healthy, satisfying, and fulfilling sex life. 
Noah, I found your videos, read your book, and spent time on your website, which is what helped me the most on this journey. I ended up getting to 90 days without porn or masturbation on my first attempt, so I kept going, and I think I hit 115 days or so. I stopped counting. It was a difficult decision to make, but I decided to start masturbating again. I used a training session approach that I found online. I'm sure you must be familiar with these techniques. Familiarizing yourself with your ejaculatory point of no return, using breathing techniques and awareness to train yourself to last longer. I had heard that masturbating and fantasizing during the reboot phase would hinder progress, but in all honesty, I was so afraid of finishing too quickly with a partner and being shamed for it, so I decided to do these training exercises to prepare, pre prepare myself for the next time I would have sex, whenever that would be. I found myself easily getting rock-solid erections without porn, which I had rarely ever experienced. This is a huge difference when looking back to the last time I watched porn before quitting. I was watching some very extreme fetish porn, and I couldn't even get hard to that. So as I often say, and as is contrary to what you might hear on a lot of the forums, porn-free masturbation isn't always unhealthful or uh, harmful for your recovery, even while recovering from a sexual dysfunction like PIED. It depends on the person, it depends how they do it, but it can be done in a healthful way for most of us. And it sounds like you got to the point where you were able to easily maintain a hard erection and reach orgasm without pornography fantasy, without any visual stimulus. And that's a very good, strong sign that you should be able to physically have sex just fine. Now, that doesn't mean that the first time you try, even after you've rebooted and had that physical recovery, that things are going to work perfectly well, as I think our Anon is about to discover. After a few weeks of doing these masturbation training sessions once per week, I met a woman in a bar, added her on social media, and I went home with her the following night. I wasn't able to get an erection to have sex, which was extremely worrisome, and I feared that I had ruined my progress by masturbating again. I kept meeting with her, and continued having trouble getting and maintaining an erection, but every time we tried I noticed I got harder quicker and stayed hard for longer, even though I would lose it before penetration could happen. I also started getting erections just from kissing her, and I realized that the rewire process was working. Rewire is essential. If you don't know the difference between reboot and rewire and what these mean, read my book. You can find it on my website and get it for free as a PDF by subscribing to my newsletter, addicted to internetporn.com. That's part of the foundational basic information everyone should know on this recovery journey. But rewiring, no matter how long you reboot and just stay away from porn, for most of us, rewire is absolutely essential to get back to that point where we're consistently able to get an erection and have satisfying sex. And it takes some time. It takes conditioning, especially for someone who's never had sex or had really successful sex outside the influence of pornography. It takes time to recondition us and our sexual response system to respond immediately and instinctively to the sorts of cues that we want to respond to, like the touch of our partner, the sound of her voice, the smell of her hair, the warmth of her in our arms, rather than the cues that we've conditioned ourselves to respond to, like the light of a computer screen, opening a private browser window, typing in a search term. On the morning of the third night we spent together, I finally kept my erection and we had sex. I was almost in disbelief. I felt on top of the world. For the past few weeks now, we've been meeting regularly, and I'm having the best sex of my life without any issues at all. I am enjoying sex more than I ever thought was possible or attainable for me, and she is always satisfied. I felt like this day would never come. During the darkest times of my porn addiction, I never thought I would be able to have this kind of sex. So thank you so much, Noah. And for everyone out there struggling with this, don't give up. Keep going, stay positive, stay optimistic, and know that you will not have this problem forever. It may take time, and it can be a really painful and lonely process, but the outcome is so incredibly worth it. I wish you all the best to whoever is hearing this. You've got this. Good luck. There you have it. This Anon, from very early age, he was using pornography regularly and for to extreme measure. And before he ever had a relationship or had a kiss, he was deep into his pornography addiction, maybe even already had pornography-induced sexual dysfunction 
before his first kiss at 13. But even though he lost many relationships and even chose pornography over real love and over his real relationships, he eventually got to the breaking point, made a different decision, and turned things around and recovered. And if he can do it, and if I can do it, then you can do it. So I hope this story inspires you, teaches you a little bit. If you'd like personal guidance, as always along this journey, I'm available. You can work with me over email, over a video call, or over a phone call. You can find me on my website, addictedtointernetporn.com. All right, everybody. Have a wonderful PMO-free day, and I'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.